hundreds of thousands, it seems as though if they haven't gotten vaccinated by now, they're not going to. What happens to them? It's a very significant number, Leland. Uh, the Navy came out with an order today saying that they're going to honorably discharge uh, the one or two percent of sailors in the Navy uh, who aren't currently vaccinated. So there's a potential for separation proceedings to begin soon. You think about separation proceedings, uh, a couple of hundred thousand members of the U.S. military, there's a couple of million active duty members. You lose you know, five or 10 percent of fighter pilots that are already in high demand. You use five or 10 percent of SEALs or Green Berets. Uh, that seems to have a real effect. It sure would have an effect. And I, and I think the, uh, the vaccine resistant uh, are particularly prevalent in some of those communities you mentioned, such as the special operations community. Uh, so it's, it's going to be a significant issue uh, for readiness going forward. As you've looked at this, is there is there any court argument or legal argument to be made? There's a religious exemption, but is there a exemption against being angry at the mandate or not trusting the vaccine or, in a way? No, no uh, uh, taking that in two parts. Uh, there is a religious exception. Um, it has to be countersigned by both your commander and your chaplain. And one of the considerations is readiness. So I would think that most commanders uh, might not sign it, saying that it's a readiness issue. Uh, legally, uh, really, the, the service members don't have grounds to stand on. Uh, George Washington made the Continental Army get vaccinated against smallpox. Um, and there's Supreme Court precedent uh, exactly on point um, that upholds vaccine mandates. Uh, you know, the issue as to whether the federal government can mandate it for states is an interesting constitutional legal issue. Uh, and I'm not sure how that'll turn out when it's inevitably challenged. But whether the federal government can make the federal military take the vaccine is a matter of black letter law. Black letter law in that, in, I guess conceivably, the, in a way, the Navy's doing these 100,000 soldiers a favor because saying you're going to be honorably discharged, there was arguments to have dishonorable discharges, right? That's right. And what the Navy clarified, and I think this is correct, is that if there's other misconduct involved, if someone's refusing to wear a mask, if they're doing something against good order and discipline, uh, then perhaps the, the, the discipline might be of a, a lesser character. Uh, but if, if someone has a principled objection to the vaccine, uh, although I don't share that objection, uh, there's no need to interfere with their veterans' benefits uh, and their onward employment opportunities by giving them a less than honorable discharge. It's interesting you brought up that it, it's really a choice the Navy is making here. One attorney points out that it, it may not be a choice for some. Take a listen. People who fail to follow this order, the risk is at the lower end, they're going to be kicked out. And that can you know, be worth millions of dollars in retirement benefits, um, could affect someone's VA benefits, depending on what characterization they get. And at the higher end, they could be court-martialed. So is that just a threat that's out there, or is that something that's actually happening? It's not happening to my knowledge. I think it's just a threat. I think the Navy regulation set it forth pretty nicely. They're not talking about using the punitive articles of the Uniform Code of Military Justice against these people. But the Navy's concerns, I think, are very well put. Uh, people are on a ship. Uh, we had an aircraft carrier, the Theodore Roosevelt, uh, go out of service because of coronavirus. And, you know, with a potential conflict with China looming, we can't lose one of our 11 carriers or, or one of our 18 ballistic missile submarines uh, because they catch coronavirus because of one unvaccinated sailor. I want to get back to this concept of this religious exemption for people and readiness is part of the conversation. Is that sort of setting, is that setting up a possibility that you have people who are highly trained and highly needed for readiness? I'm thinking about SEAL commanders, fighter squadron leaders who are already on deployment and downrange that would be able to say, I have a religious exemption and perhaps the chaplain and the commander may not question how sincerely held that religious belief is in the name of readiness? I, I think one of the things that'll give a little bit of wiggle room um, is that a person can have a pending request for a religious exemption and not be discharged. So I would think as far as uh, sailors that are serving forward, uh, they could file a request. I looked at what the request is. It's really a very simple thing. Uh, and perhaps their, their commander and their chaplain cannot act on it until the end of their deployment uh, as a readiness issue. But the larger readiness issue, uh, as you bring up, is, is well put. Um, and it, it's going to be difficult uh, for the military to handle if these numbers still stay where they're at. 98 to 99 percent of the Navy uh, is vaccinated. Uh, but some of the other services, uh, interestingly, the Marine Corps especially, um, have much lower rates of vaccination. And yeah, this here, could become a, a real problem. Here's a Marine that we heard from. Take a listen. 
or my main fear would be that myself along with many others won't be able to carry out their uh, service. Now the lower third on that, we like to call it the little words on the bottom of the screen, Pendleton Marine to fight vaccine mandate. Uh, it seems as though despite his good intentions and clearly we're grateful for his service, there may not be that much to fight. There's really not, uh, you know, and, and the service went through this before you know, when I was on active duty back in the 90s, um, referenced the, the anthrax vaccines yeah. uh, and, and people who resisted it were eventually kicked out. So, I mean, it, it, it's, it's pretty clear uh, what the end game will, will be here uh, for individual soldiers, sailors, airmen and Marines. All right. Hey, Kevin, uh, great conversation. Thank you. Um, you and I both have an interesting perspective on this, having had a, a bad round with COVID ourselves. So um, appreciate the the unvarnished and unemotional analysis. Good to see you, my friend. Thanks, Leland. Yeah, thank you. China once again threatening the United States.